G'day, so we're further exploring the post-consumer transitioning. So in today's episode, we're going to explore the cost of business, of doing business in more detail, but look at this from the cost of the civilizational enterprise. So if we think that, say, cost now for business, the going concern of a business is they have fixed costs, variable costs, and so th- those costs uh, are what are accounted for in reference to the revenues it can generate. And yet that orientation of seeking a return for an investment presupposes um, the way of discounting present value. We have to understand the way how that occurs to then explore the question of an asset and what an asset, an asset, a business considers an asset to be an asset if it can generate cash flow. So if we're looking at what is a civilizational enterprise and the way how you have to dispose of culture as an asset, then something would flow from that. So we're really exploring the binary of goodwill and the way how money conceals goodwill to understand that that if that is a civilizational enterprise is to release mon- um, goodwill from the binary of it then we've got to look at the way how that the, the pen- potentializing effect of goodwill that flows is as a consequence of the disposal of culture as an asset so this will seem very strange when you're looking at what is business And the best way that we can explore what is business is that business is economizing actions. And so if you have to explore what it exactly is economizing actions, what is it based on existentially? It's based upon absencing ourselves to seek a return for it. So we're compensating for our absencing. So when you drill it down into that to compensate for our absencing, well, what is it that we absence? Well, if, if, if we're absenting creativity, that means to say that our economizing actions, the opportunity cost of them is the, the creativity that we otherwise absence. So when you are looking at um, business or what is commercial enterprise, that's the basis for it, is the absencing of creativity. So we have to explore that question that will then frame the risk, you know, the way how we would, a business would define risk in reference to a return and the way how we define risk when you're looking at the civilizational enterprise is to risk the form of life. And so in this way, what we're trying to do is give context to a lot of the threads that I have created or followed when you're exploring the way how you change a world or the way how you transcend the consumer that you're given as, the command that you produce yourself as a consumer, the way how that we transcend the use of money or the credit that you are not the originator of the whole civilization paradigm of commerce. So let's look at um, what is what is what is the cost. So the cost, the way that we look at this, and I've talked about this prior, is that the all costs are reducible to the opportunity cost of our economizing actions. So the way how we produce ourselves as a consumer. So you always have to start with the fact that the economy does not produce goods and services. It produces a form of life to substantiate or sanction the way things are given. Okay, so you have to realize that there's a totalizing claim. So the way how we understand the economy is not reducible to the productivity that we presuppose our division of labor allows. All right, because if there's a totalizing claim made on your time to produce you as marginal, how can you produce yourself anything more than the consumer that you're credited as? It's the limit. So when you understand that, that's the limit. All right. So anything else is as far as, you know, division of labor in reference to productivity does not make any sense. This is why this is the way how you can understand how humans become redundant. Okay, because if you think of if you think the economy produces goods and services and not a, a form of life, 
Think of what that entails for the way how things are given. If you're driving efficiencies into the productive um, processes to generate a better rate of return, it's predicated upon absencing creativity, but ultimately the relationality people share. Okay, so in that way, that you can you can say, yeah, well, we have to generate more because we we have to generate a return on the form of life of the consumer because that's the limit. So that now we have to we have to add value to the want that we credit people with by spruiking the virtues of us as an organization that we are aligning with movements within culture. That's what essentially wokeism is. It's to generate the diminishing returns on the form of life. And as I say, and this is the way how you can understand any kind of orientation towards digital, uh, central bank digital currencies or any kind of social credit system. If the form of life is failing and you need to requalify people's wants, you are requalifying what people are credit as consumers of life so that gives you an indication that the and that they won't it's not framed this way because people don't understand the way how we produce ourselves as consumers to understand that the movements within culture now is to generate a, a diminishing returns on the form of life it's it's we never leave it look at this way why because we reduce a consumer to the agency that we're credited and not the production process that produces the agency that we're credited so when you're looking at cost, you have to look at the opportunity cost of our economizing actions is a creative action that would surpass the frame of reference or the, the form of life of the consumer. And so in that way, this if you if you understand that, then the opportunity for business shifts because that is the principal opportunity that is disregarded or discounted. So when you're looking at discounting, um, the way how business uses discounting is that they determine the present value um, of, say, of a payment or a stream of payments um, that would be received in the future. And so in this way, what the way how that you understand discounting is from the, uh, the, the time value of money. So the time value of money is that the money that you have, the present value of money now is worth more is worth more than what f the future money that you could get, all right? So you only have to think that you would much prefer to have $100 now than $100 in two days' time or, or a, a two, two weeks or whatever, all right? So that there's more value, all right? But the problem, it's not the problem, but the time value of money, if you're looking at that as a basis for discounting, well, if you're looking at it from the aspect of business, you discount the opportunity cost that you don't even recognize there is one so that's what conceals it when you're looking at what you risk for a return is that you are essentially discounting the opportunity cost of economizing actions or the relationality that you could potentialize through your um uh, say enterprise or your business but the the principal prop the principal problem is not the time value of money but ultimately what that sanctions so the time value of money sanctions time as a value. All right. So you got to think that if there is if money is legitimized as a tool, well the tool is in reference to something. And so the the referencing of something is the spirituality of independence because if we've turned time into a value, we've individualized it and so therefore we're, we have a rivalrous dynamic that legitimizes money as a tool to secure the, the freedom that we condition through the spirituality that we're orientated towards. And so therefore, when you presuppose the time value of money, you, you are literally um, sanctioning the transcendental claim that's made on time when you presuppose it or equivocate it as a value. And so if you think of that, the equivocation of time with a value, that, that, that enables business not to understand the way how we produce ourselves as consumers. So why, why, how, how can I say that? Well, they're sold on a consumer because they have a customer-first orientation. So they presuppose a person, but a person is not a person. A person is a consumer. All right, we, we recede as a result of that. So we, our receding as people through the agency that we're credited is what business works with. 
But if business works with that, then they don't understand that when you address the time value of money, it's only because the individualization of time as a value is is a given. And so therefore, it's an equivalence that we work with. And we don't understand that when you equivocate time as a value, as I say, you destroy the existential integrity for life because that sanctions the use of of a credit you are not the originator of. And so therefore, the credit you are not the originator of is is money. So the time value of money is given through that transcendentalism that you are yet to address when you equivocate time as as a value. So that's why to address time as a value is anterior to what? Well, it's anterior to any opportunity of a business. All right. So if you think that if you region your your the opportunity, and so therefore you're looking at the way how you're discounting, you know, through the the payments or the the revenue that can you can generate, and so therefore you're looking at the the um, the time value of money to determine that, all right? Because you know you're you're putting it in context of well, you prefer the you value money more now. What that discounts is the presencing of the relationality that you otherwise discount. Okay, so how how do I explore that? All right, so you have a way of looking at business or what people do in reference to economizing actions. So you are outsourcing creativity or you are absencing it out. But the you can only have a creative action if people are creating together. All right, because you've got to think of the economizing action is predicated upon uh, the ideal of independence. And a creative action is orientated towards an indivisibility. So the spiritualities change. But if it's orientated towards an indivisibility, you are not securing your time against people, are you, in order to secure the the freedom that you presuppose when you are securing financial independence. So this would, because you're not using a credit you are not the originator of, because it doesn't sanction time as a value and so the, the way how that you use money as a tool. So in the con- the context of of the the discounting the relationality you have to discount the relationality because you're sold on a consumer. So you, if you discount the relationality then the consumer is given, you know, through the want but then the relationality of people that they share they share the world through their wants, okay? So you can understand that if you discount that that potential all right, the opportunity cost of economizing actions. You are setting up a world where people externalize the the cost of being of the production cost cost of being consumers. Now, because the the the, ex, the uh, negative externalities of our production pro- cost is not attributed to an individual business, you you know you think of that. So think of like if you're a business and you're producing a good that is that is has negative externalities that relates to your production process you can address it yes and you will say of course you can but how can a business if they're sold on a consumer and they basically do not understand that there's a negative externality which is the civilization that you've created and they're not it's not directly attributed to to what they do because they're sold on a consumer because they have a customer first orientation how can you address that through an individual business well you can't that's why it requires the collective vehicle, an ecosystem of all businesses when they understand that if you are sold on the cons- if you have a customer first orientation, you're sold on the consumer first. So you are creating an ecosystem where business is not sold on the consumer first. All right. So the cost associated with that, you are addressing the opportunity cost of our economizing actions. So think of in reference to, to the cost of the going concern of the business. If the cost is not reducible to maintaining the want that you can monetize, well, why would that be the case? Well, this has to do where, where you're dealing with the issue of, of um, the asset of culture or goodwill. Right, because if you are positioning yourself in a vertical, and the only thing that you can do if you have a, an entrenched position, say within a specific market, is to generate, say, above market rate of returns through improving, say, the loyalty of your customer base, and so the referral effect of other people. So, like kind of Apple does, that can charge a premium, but that's in reference to a, a specific, the specific products that they sell that they can 
increase, a, they can have a premium, they can improve their profit margins. The profit margins is what? Where Where is the profit margins um, ultimately, where's the cost associated with that? Well, that would be with pe- people bear the cost of their, their choices, all right, because why? Well, the choice of their loyalty, they are prepared to spend more for it. But when you're looking at, at, so that relates to the goodwill that's on a balance sheet of a business, okay? Now, when you, so you, and that generates the cash flow. It's only an asset because it can generate cash flow. So when I talk about that, you have to fund the relation beyond the reduction. So that's essentially making an exception to the want that you credit a person. So to forego, basically, to give something to a person, all right, this will seem ridiculous. Then what you're doing is you're animating goodwill off the balance sheet. Right, because ultimately, if you are not monetizing want, then you're not generating the, the profit margin of, of their loyalty in that case, let's say, because you're animating goodwill to potentialize the relationality beyond the want that you otherwise reduce it to because you do not have a customer first orientation. So to fund the relation beyond the reduction is to potentialize a relationality that is transcendent to that. So you're looking at the way you can potentialize the loyalty of people beyond want to what is a civilizational domain that relates to their their roles or what would other be otherwise be their roles or the way how that we acquit ourselves of a claim that's made through uh, on time through the way how that we invest ourselves in roles okay so this is orientating people towards understanding the way how they produce themselves as a consumer so when you are disposing of culture as an asset all right what happens well, that would mean to say that that if culture and the, the goodwill associated with it, all right, let's say, or the, the goodwill associated with everything that comes to the position of that business is to generate cash flow, if, the, if it's now being disposed of, that means to say that the business loses its enterprise value, as I always say, enterprise value, because if people are no longer becoming loyal to the business, but what the, the business is involved in, which is a civilizational enterprise, then the ultimate loyalty is to the civilizational enterprise. So this is why I always talk about post-consumer branding or enterprise good being the last brand, because what happens if people are becoming loyal to enterprise good, and yet enterprise good has all this brand, let's say this goodwill associated with it. But what does that goodwill do? Does that goodwill, is that goodwill used to generate above market rate of returns like an individual business would do? Well, how can it when enterprise good does not have a position within a market? You've got to think enterprise good as an entity doesn't sell anything. All right. All it does is it works as the custodian of the civilizational enterprise and it's only as good as the businesses within it. Okay, so think of what that means. If business is disposing culture as an asset to potentialize what it does through potentializing the relationality beyond the want that it otherwise reduces to. That means to say that if you are giving enterprise good the, the, the goodwill associated with the, the civilizational enterprise, the flow is not cash flow, it's goodwill. You are allowing goodwill to flow, to potentialize the relationality. So think of what that means, because if money conceals goodwill, all right, and you're no longer monetizing goodwill through seeking the improvement of a profit margins or, or improving your the premium of what you can charge people, but you are using that goodwill to potentialize the relationality, you're ultimately addressing the costs of the going concern of the business in reference to bring people to the fore. So if profitability is a provisional metric of the relationality, you are addressing the costs associated with business. So if you think, let's look at it, the, a, a variable cost would be marketing and, and um, branding, let's say. So the way how you understand this is that if you're addressing a, the um, the variable costs or fixed costs, let's say, I think it's fixed costs that relates to marketing, let's say. Well, but if you're comp- if you are creating a singular competitive strength, all right, and you understand through through the analytics that you've got, you understand that the the loyalty your customer base is actually because that they are loyal to the civilizational enterprise, that means to say you don't have to spend as much money on marketing and branding as you otherwise would because the vertical that you work otherwise within, you're not jostling in that vertical because it's you're not looking, you're beyond 
the want that you are credit a consumer or a customer with. All right, you're looking at the way you're potentializing you, um, people through through the market that you're otherwise engaged in, and so making your ba- business permeable to creating basically a civilizational enterprise in the places that you share. So in that case, what you are doing is that you are delegitimizing buyers' journeys that would otherwise traverse place the places that you share. So if if the the civilizational enterprise is to unmarket life, then the relationality is the determining factor of it. And so the more that you potentialize it, all right, the more that you you will reduce the cost associated with the going concern of producing people as consumers. So think of what happens when a person foregoes compensation, um, say by, by working for enterprise good, they ultimately are making enterprise good as the actual organization more profitable, let's say. That profitability, if everything is even, is is given towards engaging or potentializing the vertical integration of value adds, let's, let's say, within an area. So the way that you can look at this is that if you have an ecosystem and then you have capability built in and you have people working for enterprise good and they are reducing the cost associated with um, with it as a going concern as the entity then it na- it enables the the buying of businesses in reference to the a vertical to touch ground eventually and so what you are doing is that through the 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 end market you've got to think that you're working off the ecosystem of the retail ecosystem you're potentializing the relationality there because that's where you are that's the interface between what is people all right you got to think all our economy produces consumers so you address people and the end market in inverted commas but with a question of the way how they produce themselves that that through the process of that um say a conversation is ultimately going to implicate other value adds that are separate from the ultimate end market. And sp- the way how you do that is you're bringing coherence of all these values that otherwise you know, work towards the end market into the, the, the internal coherence of the, the what would otherwise be a retail ecosystem to, be, to potentialize an economy that is totally divergent. All right, so if the going concern is to unproduce people and you, the, you're reducing costs in reference to maintaining people as consumers and they are taking it up through the turns that they take, then ultimately what you are doing is that you are bringing a coherence of intent to the places that you share whereby life is given beyond the claim of a bias journey. So you've got to think that the ultimate cost when you're looking at at any form of cost so variable cost or fixed cost for a business is the the opportunity cost to produce a form of life to sanction the way how things are given so if you address the principal cost which is the opportunity and you say by not discounting the relationality that you potentialize when you otherwise outsource creativity you know, through the production process of the consumer, what you're doing is that you're setting up enterprise that is totally removed, all right, from from the way how we understand enterprise or business. Because you have to think that when you when business is reduced to economizing actions and you are potentializing a creative action, there is no return. Right? You're not seeking a return through absencing people and only seeing people as a profit center. All right, how can you generate a return on a person's loyalty when you're doing justice to the person that they are because you've potentialized the relationality beyond the price, all right, the price that you put on change? That's ultimately what you're doing because the signal, the signal of the absence of price, we would think there's no signal, but there is a signal to command. Think that if you... If, if price is a signal, so it relates to demand and supply, but then through the annulment of credit, there is no price that's put on it. It's ultimately a command. All right, so what's the command? If the command is to produce ourselves as consumers, 
All right, so that's the command economy. We have a command economy that we are commanded to produce ourselves as consumers. Then if a person is through making an exception of compensation, so not clearing time as an economic good or the means utilised to produce the form of life each time we buy, you've got to think it's cleared because time is cleared as an economic good or independent of, of the actual, the relationality of want because that's the that's a primary thing that you're focused on. You're focused on your time to secure it against. And yet through making an exception and through the annulment of credit, that time given as an economic good or given as a means to produce a form of life is not sanctioned, is not cleared, then the, the consumer is made redundant. If the consumer is made redundant, then everything changes as a result of that. You cannot price change out because it's the relationality that changes beyond a price that you would otherwise put on it. So the rationing, the rationing changes. Now the rationing, the way how the rationing changes is looking at the turns people take. Because if you're looking at, so let's look at social credit just to kind of finish. If you're looking at social credit now, well, we social credit system is just about subordination. That's all it is. But if you are credited with making an exception to compensation, you're no longer sold on the consumer and your actions demonstrate that. And so therefore, you are the originator of a credit that gets annulled through the ecosystem. So you can say that it's a social credit in some way, but it doesn't circulate to get annulled or it doesn't diminish you and it doesn't subordinate you. You are credited as being the exemplar, the, the exemplar of basically the civilizational enterprise. Right? You have to do justice to people. That's why events can be given specifically for these people because the credit that extends beyond the annulment is something that, that will remain and so therefore that you can create events specifically for these people. They separate themselves out. So you've got to think that if you are creating a way of potentializing people and people take that up through their actions... You, you, that you create ranks. You, you, you literally are creating a ranking kind of system. But it's not a rank based on a position. It's ba based upon what the person's done. Okay, and they're equal. Because you've got to think that a person that earns 200 k compared to a person that earns $100,000, when you make an exception to compensation, that the turn is equal. We're not looking at this from the kind of the foregone compensation or what we would attribute as value to what the person does. When a person foregoes compensation, the, the, the turns are equal. Why? Because both are equal to not produce or to make the consumer redundant through the turn. So how can you credit another person as far as their rank goes let's say or as far as what they do more than another person when the acts are exactly the same to unproduce the consumer so when you're given an, an event for these people all these people are equal as far as that what the the turns that they've taken and so therefore it comes down to the integrity of them as a person and what they do all right, so that's the, the that's the true considerate. This is the true. This is the way how that you orientate towards a form of equality, but it's not. You know, it's it's. But they're separate, and so they're higher. That they they, they they why are they higher? Because they're embodying an ethos. They they're not they're not talking about. It's not. There's no. They don't demonstrate values. All right, they're looking at the way how they're overcoming their marginality by embracing the praxis that's required. They're initiates. That's all they are. That's the way how you would describe that they are initiates. So they are at a degree of initiation that other people aren't. And so if you're looking at initiating creativity, well, if they're animated a turn and that turn begets another turn, then they are, that's what they are. They're an initiate of a creativity or they are becoming as a people. And so therefore that their status as an initiate is different compared to a person, say, that's working for a, a enterprise that doesn't is not owned by enterprise good and yet you're still working for it because ultimately they haven't been able to make an exception to compensation to potentialize the nodes within the ecosystem by the way how the goodwill is able to be animated, right, to potentialize a relationality beyond the provisional metric of profitability. Because if profitability is driven by the profit margins that you make on absencing people, when your marginal action changes to potentialize, to bring people to the fore, the default of that or the, the flip side to that is to reduce the, um, the, the profitability. So if you're looking at the way how you are 
bringing coherence to a civilizational enterprise, you ultimately are addressing what would be fixed cost to business. So fixed cost if you're ultimately dealing with rentism. So you look, you're really looking at the way how you procure ground and then the, the eventually what you're doing is that you're looking at the, the claim of the state that is makes on enterprise, say tax or on people. Because ultimately what that will seek to do is to generate its form of rentism. That's all it is. But that will be revealed. It, it can because when you're dealing with a culture that transcends the use of a credit you are not the originator of, money, the, the way how money is given now and with the state, it, it they're, they're they're one and the same thing. They're bound together. So when you deal with the issue of credit through not sanctioning a credit you are not the originator of, we're gonna you're gonna create this major problem where you're gonna have this this um, competing paradigms. Because you're dealing with spiritualities. One is going to position itself to maintain its ascendancy. The other one is a cultural dynamism that is so dynamic that you have the vestiges of, of this kind of uh, paradigm that is going to try preserve itself. But if the culture is dynamic, which it ultimately is, it's going to overcome it. Because the more that you potentialize it and the more that people realize that they can be engaged in creating a world beyond rentism, you know, through all ownership, be by becoming a custodian of a way, and you have a shift in that, and you're looking at a, a singular competitive strength. All right, all all businesses will fail if you think of it along those lines. If they don't become civilizational enterprises, if they maintain themselves about securing, um, generating a return on by crediting people with um, their want, and so therefore to generate the goodwill associated with that. And people realize that they can make a choice on that. That singular competitive strength has a power, and it's the power of people because it's a democratization of creativity, becomes an existential threat for the state, for what we understand. Because the exceptionalisms, as I've talked about prior, is one of violence and one of creativity. And you only have to look at the what is violence if, if you're looking at it from the Girardian point of view as far as uh, religion goes. Well, if you're looking at the scapegoat mechanism or the surrogate mechanism or the the act of violence that removes a rivalrous dynamic that would otherwise destroy, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with rivalry. We're dealing with the vestiges of violence that's found within money. All right, we're dealing with sovereignty in inverted commas. So you're dealing with that because it's found. You don't understand. People don't understand that that, that money is not neutral. It's a it's a cultural artifact. It's a religious artifact, and so therefore you're dealing with the the remnants of rivalries found within the the, the the money. But that's because we attribute value to time, and so therefore we we are acquitting ourselves of the transcendentalism or a religiosity that that sanctions money as 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 a, not a pure means, but as the religious artifact that it is. So when you realize that the opportunity cost of your economizing actions is a creative actions, then the, it, what, it means to say that the risk that we have to take is we have to risk the form of life to transcend the return that businesses are otherwise uh, legitimized by. That means to say that you're transitioning business beyond that paradigm and so therefore you're looking at the straddling of the divide and so what would be post-consumer branding, so to brand the absence of creativity that is given singularly. Anyway, until next time, take care.